The leader of the Monster Hunter team was shouting loudly and resentful. He was not satisfied with the abilities of the healer, who had not performed properly on the missions. As a result, the team leader exclaimed that he no longer wanted to be on the same team as the healer, and so he was driven away. Roust asked the leader to calm down, and not to rush his decision to kick him out. But the leader was serious and wanted to get rid of the healer immediately. The team leader called Roust a defective healer and blamed him for the failure of the last important quest. The thief Severia and the magic caster Amia followed their leader's example. The girls also blamed the healer for their failure and expressed their desire never to see him again. This time, the task was to conquer the Hydra, and this monster is considered quite a difficult opponent. Healer Rost did not agree with the accusations against him, because the real reason for the failure was that the team leader and Severia had fun during the task. Although it should be admitted that his abilities were not enough to cure Severia completely when she foolishly got poisoned, the problem was that he is a healer who can only use the basic healing magic ability, Cure. That was why it turned out that he was nicknamed the defective healer in this team, and he was the weakest. The guy decided not to continue arguing and said that he understood everything and was leaving their team. The team leader triumphantly said that it was great that the healer realized how much ballast he was for the team. The team leader then ordered the healer Rost to leave all his equipment and get out as quickly as possible. The lad obediently laid down his ammunition and headed off to new opportunities. The exiled healer went to the adventurer's guild. Rost was determined to find a new team as soon as possible, but all his attempts were unsuccessful and he was simply ignored. The healer gradually despaired because no one wanted him. He realized that everyone already knew about how he had been dubbed a defective healer and kicked out of the past team. And now, left alone, the healer would have to find a way to earn food as he could not go hungry for long. Rost thought that if he had known that he would be ignored like this, he would not have left his equipment behind. Then the guy remembered that there might be hunting grounds around this guild where he could get food. There was a meadow nearby where weak monsters usually appeared for beginner hunters. And for advanced adventurers, there is a labyrinth. The monsters that appear in the meadow are indeed very weak, and it will be useful to know the price of the material that can be collected thanks to these monsters. It has become obvious that the healer will never be able to find a new team. After all, all the adventurers were discussing how he had been banished for turning out to be a defective healer. Rost decided that perhaps he should start hunting alone. But then suddenly he was approached by a young girl. The stranger asked the healer if he could take her on as a member of his team. The defective healer was surprised at such a request and was confused, but then decided to explain things as they were. Rost told her that he was a defective healer who could only use one skill, Cure. The girl hesitated and asked if she understood correctly that his only ability was cure. The stranger then began to speculate about something. Finally, the cute girl apologized for her persistence and asked to be accepted into the team. The girl explained that her name was Nesna and she was a martial artist. So she would be happy to team up for a joint hunt and she was pleased to meet a new person. Rost hesitated to answer, for he could not believe that someone wanted to be together with a defective healer. Then Rost did introduce himself and said that he was a healer, albeit a defective one. It was a pleasure to meet him too. The boy and girl shook hands as a sign of their new union, and Rost thought that now at least he was not alone. Rost and Nesna wasted no time and went to the labyrinth for their first mission together. Nesna admitted that she had not known of the existence of the secret passage and was glad that Rost had been able to lead her that way. The flawed healer explained that an acquaintance of his had told him about this path. Rost decided that if they went hunting against weak monsters, it might attract a lot of attention, and so they could only go to the middle level. Rost thought that now it remained to be seen if this girl's abilities would be enough to defeat a monster at this level. Rost asked if Nesna could show him her strength by fighting the monsters here alone. Nesna replied that she would try her best and told the healer to watch her closely. It wasn't long before the first monster appeared, and as usual, it greeted the hunters with a vicious roar. Nesna was not the least bit frightened and immediately threw herself into a fierce fight. Just a few minutes later, the girl joyfully shouted that she had already destroyed the fifth orc. This success pleased Rost, for he could not have achieved such success on his own. Nesna announced her complete victory and said that she would now collect the magic stones from the slain monsters. Stunned by the girl's strength, Rost offered his help in sorting out the rewards. There are two types of skills that adventurers commonly use. 
One category of these skills is skills that permanently enhance an adventurer's strength and magic. The other type of skill is a skill that is active for a short period of time and give a special effect when attacking enemies. As it turned out, Nesna had both types of skills and her talent far surpassed Rost's. The girl rejoiced at her victory and the rewards she had received. Nesna promised that from now on, she would protect Rost like a brother. The defective healer thanked her for her cooperation and offered to move to the lower level to face more difficult monsters. Nesna hesitated a bit and was surprised at such haste from her new friend. The girl asked her not to rush things and reminded her that there were many strong monsters here and going alone was not the best idea. After all, teams usually gather representatives of different abilities to overcome the lower level. They need a strong warrior for each team, as well as a thief who can detect hidden traps. Rost replied that he can perform different functions and is able to recognize traps as well as a thief. Nesna noticed the huge worm and screamed, trying to warn the defective healer. Rost instantly reacted to the danger and turned around in time with his blade. The healer thought this was a great chance to convince Nesna of his abilities. The warrior girl was really surprised at this success of Rost's and asked if she had correctly realized that he was just a healer. Rost proudly replied that he was a healer who was capable of close combat. Nesna said that she understood perfectly well what Rost wanted to tell her, but none of it was good. After a brief argument, the pair of adventurers decided to go to the lower level. As soon as they went down, they were immediately attacked by monsters. Nesna did not expect such strong resistance at the beginning of the lower level and offered Rost to immediately retreat. But it turned out that the moment to escape had been lost. Among the monsters was a lick who possessed magic skill and turning their backs on him was too risky. And even if they returned to the upper level, there might be secondary damage and they would suffer significant damage. Rost tried to reassure his partner and said that it would all be over soon. The defective healer explained that as long as he attracted the enemy's attention, Nesna should choose the right moment and attack Lick. Rost boldly rushed at the monsters, quickly shortening the distance. Rost instantly found himself next to the huge monsters. The defective healer was greeted with a vicious roar and immediately tried to attack. But all the swinging blows went into the void as Rost skillfully dodged them. Rost caught the rhythm and decided that it was easy for him to dodge the clumsy monsters. It became obvious to the healer that as expected the ogres that appear in this area were of little importance. Therefore, it was possible to deal with the opponents even if they were much larger. Rost continued to dodge and move quickly from side to side, finding the weaknesses of the huge monsters and hitting them mercilessly with his blade. Euphoria came over the defective healer and he decided that he could do it for hours on end. After all, all he needed to do was just apply the ability to dodge blows. The angry ogres were furious. After all, there was no way they could hit the quick guy. Rost decided that it was possible to use such fury of the enemy against them. One of the ogres in an attempt to hit Rost once again missed its target and instead struck its kin with a mighty blow. Such fury and haste of the ogres only hindered them and could not harm the swift adventurer. The defective healer, meanwhile, noticed that the lick remained uncovered and rushed to throw several daggers at him. But the lick was more agile than the sluggish ogres and fought off the long-range attack. Then he rushed toward Rost. Aim had been waiting for this moment to signal Nesna to attack. The girl did as she should and was instantly behind Lick. Her appearance was a surprise to the formidable monster and he missed the girl's attack. After Rost and Nesna were victorious and out of the labyrinth, they felt elated. Rost explained that in fact, if the monsters had a certain level of intelligence, mocking or laughing could serve as a way to taunt them. Nesna replied that she now understood why Rost mocked monsters when he fought them. The healer admitted that of course he couldn't always laugh all the time, so this ploy had to be used wisely. Nesna, inspired by their success, said that they could make a fortune together. And because of their victory, they could get enough money to buy a big house. Roust thought about the girl's words and decided that everything will be clear when they find out the price of the trophies they received. Nesna advised to be more positive and cheer up. After winning the labyrinth and having a great conversation with each other, Nesna and Roust went to the Adventurer's Guild. The defective healer was very pleased with the joint adventure with the girl. Communicating with her was relaxing, and such a moment was able to refresh his mind after the last unpleasant events. Now he didn't even remember the fact that he had been expelled from his former team. 
Once in the Adventurer's Guild, Rost hurriedly exchanged the loot for money to find out how successful the trip to the labyrinth had been. Rost was greeted by the Adventurer Guild Administrator Almast. And then she wryly stated that she was surprised since the defective healer had found another fool to receive rewards at his expense. Ross didn't respond to Almast's provocation and said that she just wanted to sell the spoils. The Adventurer Guild Administrator started looking at the magic stones. She evaluated the loot as not a bad achievement and agreed to buy all the stones. Then Almast decided to mock Rost after all and reminded him how he had been dishonorably kicked out of the Sword of Lightning team. Therefore, all he can do is live at the expense of others. After all, he's a completely talentless, defective healer. Behind him, he heard hurtful words and taunts from the other adventurers. Rost once again felt like a pathetic person, and it was even more painful that all of this was happening in front of Nesna. Nesna did not tolerate such bullying of her new friend and decided to intervene immediately. The girl said that since this guild does not trust and humiliate her brother, they will gladly sell the loot elsewhere. Nesna grabbed Rost by the arm and dragged her towards the exit. Almast, realizing that she would be left without profit, asked Nesna to take her time leaving her establishment. The guild administrator explained that it would be a big problem to sell all the materials elsewhere. And she personally just wants to warn the naive Nesna that she is being tricked by the rogue Rost. Nesna felt a surge of anger and shouted that she would never do business in a place where her team members were so meanly insulted. Almast didn't have time to object in any way to stop the girl and only watched silently as the front door closed forcefully. Without getting the money, the two-person team found themselves on the street. Nesna apologized for her emotions, for she had promised to sell the trophies elsewhere, but had not asked Rost's permission. The defective healer, completely unperturbed by this, replied to his upset partner that he had no grudges against her. Rost thanked the girl for the way she had stood up for him in the Adventurer's Guild, and for wanting to be on the same team with him despite his bad image. Nesna promised that she would always be there for him and reminded him that Roust could rely on her completely for anything. Roust, feeling mentally close to the kind girl, asked Nesna to take care of him in future. Nesna replied without holding back her emotions that they would be much better off together. The grueling day was drawing to a close and a tired Nesna was glad to collapse on the soft bed. She could feel how her body was completely exhausted, but the emotions she had experienced kept her awake. Nysna remembered again and again the experience of the day and was pleased at the way Rost smiled at her. She liked the boy's strength and his unusual fighting technique. Memory replayed in detail all the moments of their acquaintance and their joint encounter with the monster. Only now Nysna realized that Rost had tried to cover her in times of danger. And despite the fact that Rost could confidently use only his treatment, he began to protect her without even thinking about his own safety. It was at that moment that Nysna made the right decision for herself. The girl set a major goal for herself, to become strong enough to be on the same team with Rost and protect him. And for this, she worked hard every day. And when she was training, she constantly wondered if Rost was alright now. Nesna was glad when she learned that Rost had left his former terrible team, and now she could travel with him. The girl really wanted to be a comfort to the flawed healer and become his trusted protector. But the realization of how strong Rost had turned out to be very surprised Nesna and yet it was clear that the exiled healer continued to improve. With such a useful ability, Rost could easily go to any team and become an outstanding adventurer. Nesna couldn't understand how it was that someone as incredible as Rost was so foolishly kicked out of an ordinary team. Meanwhile, Rost's former team was discussing his disappearance. It turns out the leader of the group thought that Rost was just offended for a short time and should have returned soon. It used to happen before, Rost would buy everyone a beer and apologize. But now it didn't happen that way, and the group leader resented Rost's stupidity since he really didn't return to their great team. Severia explained that she hadn't personally expected Rost to return, and so she immediately asked Amia to look for a normal and talented healer. Just at that moment, the door opened and a certain girl, apologizing for the wait, entered the room. The girl immediately explained that she was a new healer and her name was Leela. Margulis replied that he was the leader of this team and advised the girl to pick up something more suitable for the outfit. Margulis explained that Leela could be badly hurt if she was hit by a Hydra's tail and armor was a necessary attribute. Leela didn't quite understand what Margulis meant and replied that she wasn't actually going to go near a monster as dangerous as a Hydra. 
Severia immediately corrected the group leader, explaining that an ordinary healer never stands in the vanguard, but at a distance. Margulis realized that he was talking nonsense and started making excuses. The team leader complained that last night their former healer had taken all their money and equipment, so he was a little freaked out about the incident. Leela believed this lie and asked how such a thing could have happened in the first place. Margulis at this moment was pondering that now there was only one fighter left in the vanguard of his team, and this changes the whole picture of the battle. Severia replied to Leela that they weren't really worried, as their previous healer Rost hadn't really contributed much to the victory, but was just running around. Amiya corrected her friend that sometimes Rost's attacks were good, but only on rare occasions. Leela didn't understand what she was talking about, but still stated that she was honored to be on such an experienced team. Margolis replied that they were happy to have Layla in their squad as well and invited the girl to tell her about herself on the way. Margolis did not yet know that he was making a mistake in heading to the labyrinth. After all, a new healer was not enough to make up for the contribution that Rost had made to the team. The team immediately found the Hydra they had failed to kill yesterday due to its regeneration ability. Although the two heads that Rost had chopped off had not had time to grow back, its health had recovered significantly. Now the Hydra was just resting and Margulis decided that the Hydra would be an easy prey. The team leader decided not to hesitate and ordered to immediately attack the sleeping monster. Margulis was sure that the Hydra was too weakened and would not be able to put up a decent resistance. But the monster instantly revived and delivered the strongest blow to Severia. Margulis panicked and began to ask Leela to help him. The girl was puzzled that the attack warrior was asking her, a healer, to assist in destroying the monster. The thing was that Margolis simply didn't know that because of the long distance, Leela couldn't use area healing. The group leader yelled out why Leela couldn't do it. Leela bellowed back that she couldn't use magic anymore and demanded that the Hydra be stopped. In doing so, the girl called Margolis a useless attack fighter. Margolis clearly did not expect this turn of events, began to try to resist the enraged monster. But his skills were clearly not enough and he immediately missed several powerful blows. The leader of the group realized that now he was left alone with the Hydra and it threatened him with imminent death. Margulis cried out in despair that this simply could not be. And why did the Hydra appear to be so strong? The team leader was indignant because according to his plan, they should have won. He felt that since Rost, whom he thought was the main culprit for the failures, had left their group, this quest should have been much easier. Amiya, a magical spellcaster, intervened in the battle and decided to summon spirits for protection. Amiya hurriedly summoned magical help, but the Hydra's swift attack left the girl no chance. Moments later, the monster's powerful jaw had already closed on the fragile body of the sorceress. Leela was horrified at what was happening and shouted who had a first aid kit with them. But Margulis replied that they had no first aid kit and ordered an immediate retreat. The leader of the team rushed to run the very first and shouted to get away from the damned Hydra. Margulis exclaimed that since he had heavy armor and was too tired from the battle, Leela should save Amia. Severia followed her leader's example and also left the inexperienced healer with the wounded sorceress. Unlike the others, the young healer did not abandon the wounded girl and picked up her half-alive body and rushed towards the exit. Leela felt her anger at the other members of the team giving her strength and perhaps it helped her to get out of the death trap quickly. After the team was outside the labyrinth, Margolis, as if nothing had happened, asked the healer if she was alright. But Lila only angrily reminded him that the injured sorceress urgently needed medicine. Margolis asked Lila to use magic to cure Amia, because with the help of potion, the sorceress will not be able to recover quickly. And the team will lose the opportunity to fight the Hydra tomorrow. But Lila resented such stupidity of the team leader and began to shout that he is either joking or just a complete moron. After all, it is impossible to remove the Hydra poison from the human body with magic. And while they are arguing here, the Enchantress could die at any moment. Roust replied that the previous healer Rost could only purify the body by applying a healing ability. Leela stated that there were no healers who could do such a thing. The girl ordered Margolis to stop talking nonsense and carry the wounded Amia. The stunned Margolis did not argue with the divided healer and felt that today was simply not his day. Leela was unhappy with the march against the Hydra and wondered why she had joined this team in the first place. The girl had only recently arrived in this city. Leela used to be on a top-notch team from the capital city, but had to leave it after the leader pounced on her. 
After talking to the guild administrator Almast, she was recommended this particular team as they were just looking for a healer. But Almast also explained that neither Margulis nor Severia had any special abilities. The guild administrator had also warned them not to leave the team without a good reason. Leela wondered if this was a very strange city since she wasn't allowed to just leave her group. Amia started breathing heavily and began to mumble in delirium. Leela tended to the sorceress realizing that she couldn't just leave her like that as she needed skilled care now. Amia began to mention Rost in her sleep and beg his forgiveness. The sorceress mumbled that she had acted very meanly towards him and there was no forgiveness for her. Leela realized that Amia was mentioning the name of a past healer who had left the group. In doing so, he had allegedly taken the money and some belongings. That was the story Margolis had told, but now Leela didn't believe it too much. After all, she could see for herself what kind of man this team leader really was. Leela also remembered that Rost, from what Margulis had said, could remove the poison with normal healing. Leela became interested in Rost and decided to find out more about him. In the meantime, Rost and Nesna had formed a partnership in the marketplace. The merchant was pleased to see that they had once again brought her many magical stones, which was what she wanted. Rost explained that they were also grateful for the way the merchant had held them up, and they were willing to continue their mutually beneficial cooperation. Rost then provided an invoice for the goods the merchant had already bought. After seeing the amount, the mood of the peddler changed drastically. She shouted why Rost kept bringing her junk. The merchant exclaimed that she too could add all sorts of trade bonuses for her own benefit. The defective healer decided to rectify the situation and suggested that the merchant set the price of the goods herself at her discretion. The woman calmed down and promised that they could still work things out. The merchant then introduced the girl Shilia and offered to play with her. The woman explained that the girl was always happy when adventurers visited her shop. Roust did not expect such an acquaintance at all, but still could not refuse. Rost agreed to play with Shelia for a while. Merchant Mary was pleased with the result, and Shelia suggested that they start playing as a married couple soon. Rost playing with the girl reflected on the recent events. After all, up until this point, many people in the guild had oppressed him and ignored him undeservedly. But in a few days everything had changed, and he felt like a different person. All of this happened thanks to Nesna, who made him believe in himself. Mary the merchant asked why Nesna lasted so long and if she was jealous of Rost of the little girl. Nesna admitted that she doesn't pay attention to Shelia's age and she can feel herself starting to fall in love with Rost. Mary explained to Nesna that actually many people consider her and Rost as a couple. And that's why Nesna has to act much more confident if she wants to be close to her boyfriend. Nesna blushed at such thoughts and only chuckled at such rumors. Mary noticed how flustered Nesna was and asked how Rost felt about her. Nesna explained that she did not know for sure, but knew for sure that Rost treated her kindly. Toward evening, Rost all returned from his walk together with Shelia. Nesna asked why they had taken such a long walk. Rost explained that Shelia was a very sociable child and time flew by with her. Mary ended up buying all the merchandise and everyone was happy. Rost inquired what Nesna had talked to Mary about while he was gone. Nesna blushed and explained that they were talking about nonsense and she wasn't interested. Rost realized that Nesna was lying and laughed. The girl was even more embarrassed and promised that she would never say anything again. Rost couldn't keep from laughing at this reaction from Nesna and began to apologize since he had offended her in some way. The defective healer decided that Nesna reminded him of a certain girl from the past. It was because of that girl that he once wanted to become stronger. Rost was an orphan and had no hope of a good future at all. But it turned out that he had an aptitude for healing magic and was noticed. Rost was sent to be trained as a healer and it changed his life. After all, he could have continued to live in an orphanage for children abandoned by adventurers. But the training was not as easy as imagined. Rost was not to his mentor's liking and that was the deciding factor. The teacher failed to show the young lad's full potential and accused him of mediocrity. Rost was expelled from the school and he had only himself to blame. And even after becoming adventurous, Rost continued to see himself as completely useless. Rost tried not to get depressed and began to learn the skill of close combat. Rost wanted to do everything to be useful for the future team. And one day he was invited to become a member as a healer. His first team was made up entirely of newcomers. Yet they bravely went into the maze of medium difficulty. That day the maze seemed endless to Rost and the team was determined to achieve a positive result. 
Rost of course did not realize that he was being tricked, even when he was suddenly pushed in the back. It happened in a dark place in the labyrinth, and Rost fell on a goblin. The team guys were using Rost as live bait to buy time and gather materials. Rost in his naivete started yelling for the others to stay away so as not to be in danger. But the guys in response only laughed at his sincere excitement and called Rost useless trash that was only needed to distract the monsters. Rost eventually realized from the true intentions of making him a silly decoy. But those guys were quickly caught up in the payback for their sneakiness, and they all died. Rost still wanted to save them, but he didn't have time and fled the labyrinth. On his way back to town, he spotted a goblin attacking a wagon and trying to kill a little girl. Seeing such injustice, Rost found the strength to overpower his fear. He didn't even realize why he gave in so abruptly to his emotions and attacked the ferocious goblin. The following events were erased from his memory and Rost woke up after the battle in some room. The first thing he thought about was how he had managed to stay alive. The same girl exclaimed joyfully that Rost was finally awake. The girl began to thank Rost for his help and called him an amazing man. After all, he turned out to be a real hero for attacking the goblin. Rost replied that he had done nothing of the sort and just happened to be around. Then Rost told everything that had happened to him, and even how he had joined the team that used him as live bait. Rost expected it to be quite funny and the girl to laugh at his stupidity. But she started crying and said it was too cruel to do that to people. Rost realized that they had only made things worse and hurried to calm the upset child. The girl said that all the people who called Rost useless were talking nonsense, and in fact Rost was very strong. That day the girl promised that when she grew up and became stronger, she would join Rost and protect him. So he can take it easy and should wait a bit. At that moment Rost was recognized as a normal person for the first time. It was like that girl came from a noble and ambitious family. For someone like her to become an adventurer was unthinkable. But even so, the girl had actually saved Rost with her kind words. And now, many years later, Rost realized that Naisna reminded him very much of that very cheerful girl. Although it is unlikely that Naisna could be that girl, and it is only his violent fantasy. After all, Naisna does not look like a person who comes from a rich family, and her hair is a completely different color. Naisna listened to Rost's story and understood perfectly well that it was about her. Rost saw his partner's confusion and asked what was happening to her. But the girl feeling a rush of uncontrollable emotions asked not to look at her. The next morning Naisna said that they had someone to meet. Naisna explained that she wanted to visit a good and strong girl. At that, Naisna remarked that they were already a strong team, so they didn't need to take someone else. But in the future it would be nice to all live together in one spacious house. Rost replied that he wasn't as strong as Nason imagined him to be. But the girl reminded that not long ago Rost had killed a demonic monster. Nason admitted that she was very surprised when she saw Rost use battle magic. Rost explained that he wasn't very capable at magic and could only use such a thing on weak monsters. Nason replied that magical abilities can be developed and then their level will increase. The girl then asked how in general Rost can use other magic if he is a healer. Rost grinned and replied that only his master who trained him could explain that. Nasna said that she could little imagine the man who had trained Rost. The defective healer suggested that maybe someday Nasna could meet that person. Opening the door of the room, Rost heard a familiar voice declaring that they had finally arrived. Rost froze with surprise, for the girl who stood in his room was the very person who had taught him as a child. Rost asked how his master had come to be here in the first place. The girl was no less surprised than her apprentice and replied that she wondered how they had met so suddenly. Nasna did not immediately realize that the two men were well acquainted and the only one they did not know was her. Rost then asked her master if she had a headache, to which the girl offered to think about whose cause it was. Master Ralma inquired about the bond between Rost and Nasna. Are they really just friends or are they still dating? Nasna immediately blushed and replied that it was just silly speculation. To which Ralma said with a satisfied look that now everything was clear to her. The master grinned and admitted that she was getting more and more interested in watching all this now. Nasna asked not to joke like that, for it made her feel very uncomfortable. But Ralma that it was nothing like that, and she was just having a lot of fun chatting with her old apprentice. Rost knew his master very well, and so he decided to help Nasna, even though he wondered what would come of it. The defective healer said that since he had escorted Nasna out, he would now wait outside. Rost had already headed for the exit, but an agitated Nasna tried to call out to him. 
Ralma, on the other hand, used her magic in an instant. The magical power of the Master of the Unexpected threw Ross to the side, and he barely managed to grab the door in time to avoid falling to the floor. Ross then saw the familiar long-ago caustic gaze of his former master. Ross said that he now understood everything about how things really were. Ralma announced that she had changed her mind and asked Rost to leave the room for a while, so that she could have a quiet word with Nesna in private. The defective healer did not argue and immediately left the room slamming the door behind him. Nesna asked Ralma if Rost was her apprentice. Nesna explained that he was not at all as Ralma had described him. Nesna recalled that Ralma had predicted Rost to be a bad adventurer at most, and Ralma had pointed out that Rost had the ability of a healer, but that turned out not to be true. And upon getting to know Rost better, a completely different set of circumstances came to light. Ralma replied that her words were not false, at least not until a few years ago, when she was still training him. And now her sudden attack only confirmed Rost's level. And before, Rost couldn't even react to an attack from the front, but now he was much stronger and more experienced. Ralma asked to tell more about Rost, since she was now on the same team with him. Nesna agreed and prepared some flavored tea to calm down a bit. After hearing this, Ralma said that now she understood how things really were. Nesna inquired what Ralma meant. Ralma admitted that she really used to think that Rost could not be a good adventurer. But the current Rost has power comparable to world-class adventurers. Nesna was surprised at such a revelation of a true master. She recalled that the gap between first-class and world-class adventurers is quite significant. Nesna told her that Rost was merely dodging the Hydra's attacks by stacking all his strength in defense. And that's really not that hard to do. And does Ralma really think Rost was doing it for a reason? Ralma explained that putting all your strength into defense makes the battle one-sided. Therefore, such a battle cannot be too easy. Ralma reminded Nesna that she herself might have experienced such a thing and should better understand her condition. Nesna remembered how the enemy had pushed them back and they were at a great disadvantage. But at that moment Rost had remained unfazed. Ralma explained that being unperturbed and keeping the enemies under control was the only thing that could be done in such a difficult situation. And now Nesna must realize for herself that it was an incredible ability to be in such an unperturbed state in front of a dangerous monster in a losing situation. Nesna thought about the master's words and realized that she was completely right. Ralma admitted that she herself would be very uneasy if she were to suddenly fight Rost. Ralma then stated that she wouldn't have lost to her apprentice anyway. After all, all she would have to do would be to prevent Rost from attacking. Nesna asked what Ralma meant by all of this. And did Rost really have no talent? Ralma replied that Rost previously had no talent even in healing, and so she had trained him in offensive magic. But his healing magic is still too basic. Ralma explained that she really thought that Rost would not be able to develop in the future, and so she openly told him that he had no talent. But as it turns out now, she was too wrong at the time. Rost is certainly not a very human being, but he has come a long way since those long ago. And it turns out that although Rost doesn't have good talents, he can make up for it with hard work. Nesna realized that all that time she had been striving to become stronger and be on the same team as Rost to protect him had gone in vain. For in fact, she herself remained the one who needed to be protected. This made Nesna sad, and she recognized that she had never been able to take care of or help Rost. Ralma reassured the girl and explained that although Rost was doing what he could, he could not have gotten this far alone. Nesna replied that this was a misjudgment because before she joined Rost, he was already a pretty strong adventurer. Ralma replied that he was completely different now than he had been before they met. It was only because of Nesna that Rost had begun to show much more vivid emotions. Ralma explained that she had certainly taught Rost a lot of things, but he kept asking for a good companion. And at the time it was hard to believe that Rost would have a worthy companion. Ralma saw Nesna's face change and she began to cry like a child. Ralma asked what was happening to her and what had upset Nesna so much. But the girl, through her tears, replied that she was actually very glad that she could help Rost in some way. Ralma smiled at Nesna's childlike directness and said that everything would be alright. After all, after all, Nesna bore the proud name of Anelstria. Nesna thought that was a rather odd comfort, but it was more than enough. Rost heard that familiar name and immediately understood everything. After all, that girl who had taken him in when he was having an incredibly difficult time, and of whom he often thought back, turned out to be the same person as Nesna. 
An emotion came over Rost and his face instantly turned red. At this point, Nesna thanked Ralma for the rich conversation. Ralma advised the girl to go and wash herself and then meet Rost. The defective Gila realized that he would be incredibly embarrassed now if Nesna saw him in such a state. Meanwhile, Nesna had already said goodbye to Ralma and asked her to keep their conversation a secret, especially from Rost. Left alone, Ralma thought that it was too difficult to talk to these young people. And then she promised herself that she would not talk about such serious matters again, even under threat of death. Though this conversation should still leave its mark on Nesna's life, and in doing so, help Rost. Nesna decided that now she should think about how to help Rost and stop remembering the past. And that is why it is urgent to tell Rost that they need a home for their team. Suddenly, unfamiliar adventurers appeared on Nesna's path. A cheeky fellow asked where she was in such a hurry and offered to have a little chat. Nesna replied that it does not interest her and she has no free time. But the guy was persistent and blocked the girl's way. Nesna did not continue the conversation and bypassed the adventurers and rushed forward. The guy behind said that they just wanted to invite Nesna to their team. And for that, they were even willing to make room. The guy explained that if Nesna agreed to leave her current team, they would let her join their group of disaster wolves. The guy reminded her that his team was the best team to go through all the dungeons. But Nesna had heard of the disaster wolf team. In that infamous group, they forced blackmail to kill some newbies with other newbies. Nesna replied that she doubted the abilities of the disaster wolves, and it was unlikely that they could pass the dungeon to the end. Nesna explained that even Rost, whom they were able to trick sometime in the past, was able to pass the trials that they cannot overcome as a whole team. So how does it make sense for her to join a team of disaster wolves? And anyway, how could they call Rost defective if they themselves can't do what Rost can accomplish? The leader of the Wolves of Disaster stated that Rost was just lucky, and at the same time, don't forget how he was kicked out of a first-class team. And now all Rost can do is make money off naive people like Nesna. Nesna replied that apparently the Disaster Wolves have the wrong opinion since they think that strength makes them first-class adventurers. After all, even with their strength, they still couldn't go below a certain level. The leader of the Disaster Wolf team got angry at Nesna's audacity, and ordered his guys to capture her immediately. Nesna immediately reminded him that fighting was forbidden in this city, and they were breaking the law. But the team leader didn't hear the girl and continued his attack. Nesna repelled the attack and struck back. Nesna promised to do things to the team of Disaster Wolves, far worse things than they had done to Rost. Nesna's accurate blows immediately cooled the ardor of the overconfident lad. Nesna defeated the leader of Team Disaster Wolves, asking if that was all he could do. But suddenly a wizard intervened in the duel and began summoning a tree spirit. Nesna sensed the approaching danger and realized with regret that the nearest alleyway was narrowing and it was unlikely she would be able to escape. The solution came instantly. Nesna realized that since she would not be able to escape, she must attack her opponents. The Disaster Wolf team members had not expected such boldness from the girl at all. The sword guy tried to repel Nesna's attack, but his movements were too slow, and he immediately received a powerful blow. The next target for the impetuous Nesna was the caster, and she needed to get ahead of him. Nesna couldn't get ahead of the magical strike, and was eventually captured. The girl demanded that she be untied immediately. But the commander of the disaster wolves gloatingly replied that she looked much better this way. Nesna was out of control with anger and tried to break free, but her strength was too little. The boys made fun of her vulnerable position. They called Nesna a complete fool since she was really into the difficile healer. After all, in their opinion, Rost's pretty face was the only plus side of him. The head of the Disaster Wolf team admitted that he was extremely surprised when he heard Nesna standing up for Rost in the Adventurer's Guild. Although he didn't believe it right away, he now realized that it was true. And now, finding himself without help, Rost will realize where he belongs. The Wolves of Disaster have decided that they can do whatever they want with Nesna now, as long as they don't sell her into slavery. The commander confirmed the wishes of his charges and said that he hadn't even decided when he would sell Nesna yet. The Wolves of Disaster were eager to know Rost's reaction to the fact that they had captured his mate. Nesna laughed without expressing any fear of those who had captured her. From this reaction, the commander of the Wolves of Disaster became enraged and started shaking the defenseless girl. He shouted why the hell was she having so much fun, after all he could do whatever he wanted to her. Nesna declared that there was no way losers like them could defeat Rost. 
The disaster wolf commander stopped controlling his emotions and tried to hit Nesna. He yelled that Rost was nothing but a defective idiot who couldn't do anything. Nesna didn't dodge and only covered her eyes before the blow. At that moment, Rost swiftly approached and parried the disaster wolf commander's punch. Rost shouted that of all the people present, the disaster wolves were the biggest losers. Then throwing a punch, Rost apologized to Nesna for being a little late in helping. Nesna exclaimed that she was glad to see Rost and grateful for his help. Rost replied that she was glad that nothing bad had happened to Nesna yet. Rost then said that he would now finally untie Nesna. At this, the defective healer caught himself thinking that from the overwhelming feelings, he could barely keep from hugging the girl. At that moment, the commander of the Wolves of the Disaster, Mosril, stepped back from the blow and decided to sneakily attack from behind. But Rost was prepared for this turn of events and managed to react in time. Rost covered Nesna with his body and exclaimed that he would never forgive such a sneak attack from Mosril. Rost repelled the Disaster Wolf commander's attack and struck back hard. The other members of the Wolf team froze in place at the sight of the defeated commander. They couldn't believe what they were seeing, for they thought Rost was supposed to be a weak opponent. Rost turned his attention to the others and said that he could have left them unharmed if they had not been involved in the crime. But since they were equally guilty with their commander, they should answer as well. Rost rushed forward and struck the first guy who got in his way. The adventurer immediately fell to the ground from Rost's blow, and Rost continued on his way. Ahead of him was the last opponent, the same spellcaster who had caught Nesna. The wizard began to rush to summon a forest spirit to help him, but he did not have time to do so. Nesna decided to repay the wizard for all her offenses and kicked him. Roust remarked that Nesna herself was able to defeat them all, even without his help. The girl replied that in any case, she was glad of the way Rost had come to save her. Besides, there were too many opponents and she was unsure of her success. Roust thought at that moment that Nesna would have easily dealt with those scumbags if not for a trivial accident. The boy felt a little ashamed of himself for being so worried in this situation. Then Rost and Nesna heard alarmed shouts behind them. The disaster wolf healer tried unsuccessfully to help his commander. But all his attempts to apply supreme healing had failed, and the young healer resented why his magic wasn't working. Rost took pity on his defeated opponent and applied ordinary healing several times. The healer of the wolves of disaster was surprised, such an unusual method of imposing multiple healings. And Nesna asked why Rost would do such a thing. The healer of Team Mosril asked why Rost could do such a thing, since he must be a defective healer who only knows how to mess around. Rost did not go into details and only told the healer that he was too noisy. Rost then sent the outraged opponent into a deep knockout. Rost heard an unfamiliar voice asking if there was a crime going on here. The guy who appeared turned out to be one of the staff of the Adventurer's Guild. He immediately realized that there was a personal clash between two groups of adventurers here. The guild representative said that both teams were responsible for what had happened, but he would definitely take into account that Roust's group had acted in self-defense, and thus would definitely take the responsibility for the incident off Roust's hands. However, the proceedings with the Disaster Wolves group would now have to be left to the guild. Rost guessed that the guild would try to cover up the real culprits of the incident and decided that it was worth showing his trump card. Rost stated that Nesna was well acquainted with a high-ranking adventurer named Ralma. Nesna realized what her partner meant and replied that Ralma had indeed recently arrived in this city, and so she would be happy to inform her of what had happened. Rost hinted that if the guild did the right thing, they would not leave a complaint to a powerful adventurer like Ralma. The guild representative asked to wait for a while. The guy then promised that he would definitely listen to all the details of the incident in the Adventurer Guild and promised to make a fair judgment. Ross said that he still had a few words to say to Morsrul. Roast promised the Disaster Wolf Commander that if he dared to cause trouble for Nesna one more time, he wouldn't get off so easily again. And it would likely be the last thing he would do in his miserable life. Morsrul hissed with anger and said, how can a lowlife like Rost be so powerful? After all, he is far more talented than a talentless healer. And in fact, his team of disaster wolves are the closest to the lower floors of the labyrinth. Morsril asked why Rost could freely go to the lower levels, and he couldn't. Nesna intervened and stated that Morsril had no right to say that. And how could he not notice all of Rost's hard work? 
Therefore, all those who insulted him should recognize his efforts and treat him as a worthy adventurer. Nesna gave vent to her emotions and demanded an explanation as to why Morsrul, and those like him, were constantly trying to humiliate Rost without noticing his hard work. Nesna didn't notice how many adventurers were around and began to say how pathetic Morsrul had turned out to be. People began to mock the Disaster Wolf team and joked that it was foolish to admire such talentless adventurers. Morsrul realized that this was a real setback for his career as an adventurer, and Nesna felt truly relieved at this result. Morsrul tried to be indignant, but he was immediately quieted by a powerful blow. The formerly illustrious commander of the Disaster Wolves turned into a humiliated man who lay in the road dust. Ralma solemnly declared that the Disaster Wolf team was now finally finished. Ralma rejoiced at this result and decided for herself that Nesna would be perfectly fine in the future. Rost looked at his partner and asked her to stop crying so often, for he liked it better when she smiled. The girl promised not to do that anymore and blushed and smiled. Ralma watching what was happening decided that she was wrong about many things before. After all, she really did not expect Rost to suddenly become such a strong man. Ralma had absolutely no sympathy for the wolves of the disaster who had chosen to provoke the incident themselves. And in any case, it was time for her to get back to work. Therefore, she could no longer ignore the crime of the local adventurers and will gladly engage in a thorough investigation of everything that happened. Ralma decided that Ronald's apprentice should arrive soon, and then she will leave the safety of the people under his responsibility. In the meantime, she needs to uncover what the Adventurer's Guild of this city is really up to. Meanwhile, Margulis's team continued their attempts to reach the lower levels of the Labyrinth. They were able to gain many rewards but never surpassed themselves. After being defeated by the Hydra, their spirits were at a low point and it was affecting everything. Amia promised that tomorrow she would try to get the team to go to the labyrinth again. But Leela decided that she was unlikely to succeed with this one. Margolis resented why Leela and Amia hadn't come earlier. Leela then asked where their team leader was in such a hurry. Margolis reported that he had hired a new skillful warrior, so they were going to the lower floors of the labyrinth immediately. Margulis' team was in a hurry to get to the labyrinth. The leader of the group had already started the transfer process. Leela didn't share the enthusiasm and didn't understand how the others could be so careless to go straight to the lower levels. After all, the past experience had been a failure. At the same time, no one knew what exactly the new team member was capable of. Amia decided to intervene and asked them not to be so hasty. She explained that if they went down that deep, they would immediately run into the boss. Margolis became indignant and ordered the sorceress to shut up immediately. Leela also decided to oppose the group leader's decision, but it was too late. The process had been set in motion. It was successful and Leela excitedly asked how deep they were in the labyrinth. Margolis didn't bother to answer and ordered them to go forward. Leela continued to be indignant and advised caution, but the team was already headed to meet deadly danger. Leela saw the glistening flames ahead and was visited by a bad feeling. The fire monster reacted to the troublemakers and rushed towards the adventure team. Margulis exclaimed that this was the same phoenix Almast had told them about. Margulis stated that the phoenix was certainly a very strong monster, but with the new warrior they could easily prevail. Severia supported the commander and said that they would do it even without Rost's help. Leela thought at that moment that it was all a mistake and they wouldn't be able to defeat the phoenix. But Margulis shouted that they now had two good warriors in their team and ordered to start the battle. But in the next instant, Margulis' confidence was gone, for it turned out that the new guy had disappeared without a trace. The team leader panicked and started shouting that if they did nothing, they would all die. The team was at a loss. And the Phoenix Fireball was already closing in on Amia. At the last moment, Leela was able to save the sorceress from the fatal blow and pushed her aside. Leela once again recognized how stupid she had been to join this talentless team. And now the same story that was the Hydra was repeating. But suddenly a new guy did show up and was able to push the Phoenix back a bit. The new guy declared that since he was here, the rest of the team could not worry. The Phoenix felt threatened and prepared to attack, while the newcomer prepared to meet the fire monster. The flying Phoenix flapped its wings, showering everything around it with deadly heat. The newcomer moved forward with his huge sword in front of him. The newcomer found himself one-on-one -on -one with the phoenix, but did not retreat and only continued to fiercely swing his sword. Leela admired such composure and watched the battle with interest. 
The Phoenix chose the moment to rush at the warrior, and they were seconds away from colliding. Margulis quite expectedly did not help the newcomer, but merely stood by and waited for the outcome of the battle. The team leader exclaimed that now they would definitely defeat the Phoenix. But Leela saw things differently. After all, usually such warriors are good on offense, but it was unlikely that this newcomer would be as good on defense. And now the rest of the team is pushed back a considerable distance from which it's difficult for them to attack. And a critical situation could arise at any moment. Leela called Amiya and said that they should all fight together. But a safe distance must be maintained. The newcomer said that so far everything was fine and he had managed to buy enough time. The team found themselves at the displacement gate at the very moment the monster was dangerously close. The phoenix was already at arm's length and the rookie promised at the last moment before teleporting that he would definitely kill the fire monster next time. The team disappeared, thus allowing the phoenix to take revenge for such an audacious appearance. Leela was glad that they were able to return unharmed to the city. But Margolis became indignant and yelled at the newcomer, how could he do such a thing since they had every chance of defeating the boss? Margolis accused the newcomer of breaking the terms of the contract and now he must make amends. The rookie reminded him that no one else had even participated in the battle besides him and it was a total disgrace to the team. Margolis exclaimed that he would not allow such talk and tried to attack the guy. The rookie easily parried Margolis' attack and laid the commander face down in the ground. The rookie declared that he was revoking all titles of high-ranking adventurers of this team from this moment on. Margulis was outraged at how such a thing was possible. And Severia began to shout that rookie was talking utter nonsense and had no right to do such a thing. The newcomer reminded that in this city, it is forbidden to fight among themselves and Margulis violated this rule. Immediately, the administrator of the Adventurers Guild, Almast, appeared and asked what was going on here. She stated that it was her understanding that Mr. Margulis was now being attacked. Severia started yelling that a newcomer without any reason allowed himself to be attacked by the team commander. But the newcomer retorted that he was an adventurer who reported directly to the guild headquarters in the royal capital. Leela, like everyone else, was surprised by such news. And Margulis began to shout that he didn't care at all what position the newcomer held in his capital because he was now in the Labyrinth City and should take that into account. Severia asked if he really thought that since he came from the capital, he could leave their team so easily without repercussions. After all, it should not be forgotten that since he is in the Labyrinth City, he cannot leave the group. Almast hurriedly intervened, and the newcomer was very surprised at such strange rules. The capital adventurer stated that it was the first time he had heard such a stupid rule. Almast began to explain that apparently it was some kind of mistake and Severia had misunderstood everything since she thought there was such a rule. Leela was outraged by such meanness and reminded the head of the local guild that she was the one who approved such a rule in this city. The capital adventurer barked at Almast that he wasn't going to listen to her lying excuses. Capital adventurer stated that as of this moment, Team Thunderblade ceased to be a highly ranked group of adventurers. The guy explained that he was officially appointed by the Royal Capital Guild to check the adventurers in Labyrinth City. So he had every right to decide such matters on behalf of the king. Margulis and Severia couldn't believe such a twist and resented that it couldn't be done. But the capital adventurer replied that they deserved such an attitude, for he had never seen such rotten people before. After these words, Margulis could not answer anything and accepted total defeat. The envoy from the royal capital then explained that Margulis was being fined for forcing his group members to fight the labyrinth boss. He would also be fined for keeping a healer in his group by deception, and in addition, he would be required to reimburse the cost of the artifact that was used to escape the labyrinth. Margulis became indignant and explained that he would not be able to repay all that money. Amia barked at her leader to stop arguing, for all the blame lies solely on him. Amia apologized for his entire team and promised to pay the full amount. Then the messenger of the capital advised Leela to go to the Royal Capital's guild because Labyrinth City was too dangerous a place. Leela recognized the fellow and asked why he, Zig, was dressed up so strangely. The guy replied that Leela is completely wrong and his name is actually Sig. And in any case, he advised to work in the capital and not in this city. Leela called the guy again, calling him Sig. But he repeated that she was just mistaken and he wasn't the person she meant. But Leela didn't back down and since he wasn't Zig, he must have somehow stolen Ronald's magic sword. 
Zig couldn't stand it and exclaimed that this sword was given to him by his mentor and if Leela wants, she can ask Ronald personally about it. Zig realized that he had now given himself away. And Leela asked if he wanted to explain something to her. Zig took off his mask and told her that he was really going to come back as soon as he was done with the case. And he was sorry that he couldn't help Leela in the capital. Sieg explained that he had used his powers and demoted the group that tried to attack her. But even after all that, Leela had left the royal capital. Therefore, he had completely turned a blind eye to the danger his best friend was in. Sieg said that he was sorry and apologized for his act. Leela replied that in that case, would Zig be willing to do some favors for her? Zig promised that he would fulfill anything, and all she had to do was just tell him that. Leela stated that she wanted to be a life partner for Zig. Zig did not understand the true meaning that Leela put into her words. Zig wondered if she just wanted to join his team, since he could do so much more for her. Leela thought that Zig was a real fool. After all, he has no idea how many confessions she has rejected and all for him. Leela replied that she just wanted to be on the same team with him. After all, Zig is going to beat that phoenix anyway, and she would love to keep him company. Zig then decided to elaborate and asked if Leela really wanted to take care of him again, and if that was the case, it would be of great use to him in the future. Leela was embarrassed by such frankness and agreed. The girl then informed him that she had one wizard in mind that she would like to call to their team. After all these events, Margulis sat in the inn and poured alcohol on his grief. He complained that he didn't understand how this could have happened. After all, he had just recently been a first-class adventurer. Then he asked Severia if he could invite Rost back to their team. Severia replied that it was unlikely that Rost would accept the offer, though if he could find a good reason, he could try. Then Margulis heard a conversation at a neighboring table. They were discussing how they were preparing an attack on the defective healer. From their conversation, it appeared that Rost was able to deal with the disaster wolf team, and so more people were gathering. The drunken guys discussed that they should definitely find out how powerful Rost was, but to do so, they needed to prepare well. Margolis immediately realized that this was his chance, and reported to Severia that she had figured out how to convince Rost to return to their team. The next morning, Margolis and Severia were able to find Rost. Rost was very surprised to see them and asked what they were doing here. Margolis stated that he had something important to say for a very long time. Margolis apologized for his shameful actions and admitted that he was truly sorry. Severia also began to apologize and said that she just hadn't realized before how much good Rost had done for the team. Margolis explained that the two of them were indeed very embarrassed to appear in front of Rost. But he should warn Rost that he had become a target for some adventurers because of his handling of the wolf disaster group. Margolis has stated that he is willing to stand in Rost's defense if he returns to their team. Rost laughed at such a sly offer and replied that he had to decline. After all, he already has so whom he can fully count on. Therefore, there was no need to show concern for his well-being, for he was well protected. Margulis realized that his plan had completely failed. But then Margulis tried to convince Rost that his girlfriend was really just using him. Also Margulis stated that as far as he knows, Nasna is not an attractive adventurer in any way. And Rost should not team up with such a person. Rost was outraged at such words, but tried to restrain himself. Rouse said that he didn't see the Thunderblade team as an enemy. Margulis decided that he had succeeded in convincing Rost, but Rouse replied that his only true comrade was Nesna, and if Thunderblade team went against her, he would personally destroy them. Rost also explained to Margulis that he must not speak ill of Nason or he would wish it away. Margulis did not argue, feeling threatened, and Rost in parting thanked his former team for worrying about his health. Nesna witnessed this conversation and was glad that Rost had grown to cherish and protect her so much. Severia barked that Margulis should not stand a pillar and catch up with Rost immediately. But Margulis replied that Rost was too apologetic and was not behaving as he used to. Severia was unhappy with this reaction from her commander and asked that didn't he want their team to become elite again. Margulis replied uncertainly that he would definitely try harder next time. But suddenly Nesna appeared and declared that there would never be a next time. And then Nesna sent Margulis into a deep knockout with a precise punch. Severia was startled to realize that the same girl from Rost's team. Nesna angrily snarled at Severia's thieves that they were always causing trouble for Rost. But this time she would let them go on one condition. Nesna warned that if they ever dared to use Rost again, then she would have no mercy on them. 
In parting, Nesna advised Severia to give a good explanation to that scoundrel lying on the floor. Rost asked why Nasara was taking so long, but the girl only grinned in response. Rost said he was glad since everything ended well. The guy admitted that actually his former team, Thunderblade, had actually returned to the guild, and he was a little worried lest Nesna had a falling out with them. Nesna hesitated to answer and Rost sensed that there was something the girl wasn't telling him. Rost tried to find out more, but Nesna changed the subject and suggested they go to the field. Rost only thought why Nesna so suddenly agitated. Roust noticed the suspicious adventurers around and whispered to Nesna that this was what Margulis had tried to warn him about. Without giving the appearance that they understood, Roust and Nesna set off into the field. As expected, they were soon surrounded by a group of angry adventurers. The lads began to rejoice that the booty had come into their hands on its own, and they didn't have to look for the right moment for long. The adventurers said that the guild would not interfere if they finished off Roust and Nesna outside the city walls. Therefore, it was time for them to say goodbye to their lives. Rost replied that the adventurers had better shut up, for in fact they are very wrong. And they were the ones who signed their own death warrant when they left the walls of the city. Rost explained that he had left the city on purpose to lure out all the idiots who were determined to defeat him. The adventurers did not appreciate Rost's cunning and shouted that he urgently needed to be taught a lesson. To which Rost replied that it was his turn to teach the idiots good manners. Rost immediately noticed the brave fellow who decided to shorten the distance to avoid his throwing knives. But this was a fatal mistake, for far more dangerous than his knives were Nesna's fists, which meant the insolent man at short range. Rost took the next adventurer's attack and heard the cries for help from the wounded boys behind him. Rost thought contentedly that Nesna was doing a great job of dealing with the idiots who dared to set a trap for them. And indeed Nesna was furious and brought death to everyone she could reach. Rost remembered how all these adventurers despised him in the guild, and it added to his resolve in the fight. He decided that if he came out victorious in this battle, the situation would change forever and no one would disrespect him anymore. At the same time, Rost clearly realized that he could not have gotten this far without Nesna's help. Then Rost felt the presence of something terrible. His fears were confirmed by the shouts of the adventurers who were pointing into the distance. It appeared that a terrible monster was approaching them. The adventurers forgot about the battle with Rost and turned their attention to the Hydra. No one could believe that a magical beast had appeared here because it had never happened before. That being said, the Hydra was also a sign of mutation, which added to the danger. Rost realized that this was the same Hydra that he had cut off several heads. And now it had absorbed the magical power after receiving the damage and became even stronger. Rost thought that the Hydra had mutated too quickly and now looked even more dangerous than before. Behind them, they heard the shouts of the adventurers who were gripped by panic. They urged each other to flee immediately, for there was no way they could stand a chance against such a monster. Rost pondered that the danger was indeed serious, and even if they all pounced on the Hydra together, it was unlikely that they would be victorious. Rost realized the extent of the threat and decided that it was necessary to save at least Nesna. Rost, without explaining anything, ordered his partner to run away from here immediately. Nesna asked how on earth Rost could stay alone against such a monster. But the guy asked Nesna not to argue and just run away. The girl declared that she would not leave Rost for anything and offered to run away together. But Rost explained that he would try to delay the Hydra and Nesna should run to the city and inform everyone about the danger. Rost asked the girl to fulfill his request, for only she would be able to protect the people of the city. Nesna cried, realizing the desperation of the situation and Rost thought that he had to say such cowardly words just to save the girl. Rost decided to add to the girl's resolve and angrily ordered Nesna to run immediately to the adventurer's guild and tell them about the Hydra. But Nesna decided to do her own thing, contrary to Rost's order. The brave girl ordered the first adventurer to fulfill her assignment, but Nesna herself was determined to stay and fight alongside Rost. The defective healer did not expect such bravery from the girl at all and said that it was too dangerous here and so he asked her to leave. Nesna confidently replied that if she fought together with Rost, there was no way they would lose. Rost felt a sense of deja vu. Rost remembered the moment when he had rushed at the goblins to save the little girl and failed. His team had mocked him and called him trash who could never protect anyone. But the girl then exclaimed that it would be alright. The young lady shielded the fallen Rost from the goblins and gave him hope. 
She promised to take care of everything and declared that no goblins could defeat them. Ross that day used multiple treatments from his last strength and was able to raise his sword to stand beside the brave girl. Ross himself without realizing how, rushed at the goblins and eventually they won. And now, many years later, in the face of a new threat, Roust asked himself how he had done it. That day Rost had managed to survive because he had met such a marvelous and young creature. Now everything was repeating itself and he needed to perform a real miracle for the sake of the same girl. Roust asked if Nesna was ready to fight with him. The girl replied that this question could not have been asked, for she was always ready for such a thing. The faithful friends became back to back and Nesna once again reminded that Roust could fear nothing when she was around. Roast exclaimed that now that they were ready, it was time to go into battle. It didn't take long for the huge monster to arrive and quickly found itself next to the two brave men. Rost admitted that he did not consider himself stronger than the Hydra. But together with Nesna, there was no way he would not lose even to such a dangerous magical beast. The Hydra as if realizing Rost's words roared back, trying to show how dangerous a monster it was. Hydra stared at the one person she remembered well for it was Rost who had done a significant amount of damage the last time they met. Rost felt the monster's baleful gaze on him and decided that this was exactly what he wanted. The defective healer prepared for battle and began searching for magic. The many years of Hydra began to wriggle choosing the right moment to attack. Rost evaluated his options and finally realized that although the Hydra's appearance had changed significantly, but its way of attacking remained the same. Therefore, it would be able to defeat even such a dangerous monster. The Hydra attacked first, swiftly releasing one of its deadly heads forward. Rost was prepared for this and was able to react in time. But immediately the next head attacked as well. It was not so easy to dodge. Rost felt the powerful blow and Nesna was afraid for the person close to him. Rost realized that although the Hydra's movements had not changed, but the speed and power of the attack had increased significantly. Before he could catch his breath, Rost was forced to dodge the monster's swift lunge again and the situation was becoming sharply heated. Rost felt that he did not have time to react to the lightning fast lunges of the Hydra and now every second could be the last in his life. But at that moment Nesna intervened and launched a series of attacks, trying to buy time for Rost and give him a chance to recover. But the Hydra was completely unresponsive to Nesna and was only fascinated by Rost. The boy realized that the monster remembered how he had wounded him and was trying to return the favor. Blow after blow the Hydra inflicted on Rost, and it became clear that if things continued like this, very soon they would lose this battle. Rost decided as usual not to laugh a lot at his opponent to provoke the Hydra more. But at the same time, Nysna realized that they would not be able to defeat such a ferocious monster at this rate. And in that case, she would need to unleash even more power though that was easier said than done. But even in such a situation, Nesna felt a kind of confidence that they could defeat the monster if they did everything right. The girl decided that if she was close to Rost, there was no way they would lose. Rost felt the same way, sensing the closeness with the girl. Rost activated his power amplification magic ability and tried to find the Hydra's more vulnerable spots. Rost then added body enhancement as well to somehow minimize the damage from the Hydra. Using two abilities simultaneously required a tremendous amount of effort and Rost didn't know how much he would be able to do, but he didn't have much choice. Thanks to the magic, confidence returned and his body stopped hurting treacherously. Rost realized that he could continue to fight and should get the maximum result. The Hydra, on the other hand, felt its superiority and once again set its sights on the grinning healer. The Hydra had attacked at top speed but this time Rost dodged and even managed to land a painful blow on the monster. Rost shouted to his opponent that he was now serious and would see it through to the end. Suddenly, the monster changed its usual tactics and attacked not Rost at all, but Nesna. Rost did not expect this and felt anxious for his partner. The Hydra with all its heads surrounded the young warrior and Nesna realized that the monster wanted to kill her to drive Rost to utter despair. Nesna thought that there was no way she would give up so easily, and yet she wasn't even scared. Nesna was completely calm, for she believed that Rost could perform a miracle. She remembered how once long ago, Rost had performed a miracle for her and saved her from the goblins. And so this time when they were together too, it would long be alright. The two of them will surely show that it is possible and together they will defeat the monster. 
Neissner realized that the Hydra considers her a weak link, and so this should be taken advantage of. The Hydra's self-confidence should allow a breach in its defenses, and that will be the key to victory. Neissner began to purposely feign fear and panic in order to instill the monster with complete confidence in its superiority. Hydra caught on to this trick and hurriedly caught up with the frightened girl. This was the moment Nesna had been waiting for to make her move. Nesna made a surprise counterattack and delivered a powerful blow. Hydra immediately howled in pain, which gave the girl a real pleasure. Nesna realized that her plan was working, and she could give a decent fight back to the huge monster. The Hydra quickly recovered from the blow and attacked Nesna again. The girl did not expect the monster to resume so quickly from such damage and hurriedly dodged the huge maw. But Nesna's main task was still done. The girl apologized to the Hydra and said that she was only buying time. The Hydra got too engrossed in attacking Nesna and forgot about Rost altogether. Meanwhile, Rost had gotten close enough to the monster and after thanking Nesna, exclaimed that he was taking care of the rest. The sharp blade of the blade managed to reach its target and the Hydra howled in unbearable pain. Rost put all his strength into this blow and the result was achieved. The neck of the mighty beast was sliced open, and one of the heads collapsed to the ground in a lifeless lump. At this moment Rost felt complete powerlessness along with relief and fell to his knees. Rost muttered that he had managed to hit the Hydra's weak spot, and apparently he was very lucky. The healer then stated that together with Nesna, they would become even stronger. And if the girl continued to be by his side, he would reach the level of the strongest adventurer. Rost stated that this victory would be their common foundation to develop and improve. Weakened from the battle, Rost exhaled in relief and rejoiced that it was finally over. Rost called out to Nesna and the girl hurried to meet him, but after taking a couple steps collapsed to her knees from exhaustion. Nesna apologized for her helplessness and Rost gave her a friendly helping hand. As soon as the girl accepted the hand, Rost quickly lifted Nesna into his arms and embarrassedly advised her to rest. They both blushed, but were glad for such a pleasant moment. Nesna clung to Rost like a child and felt his pleasant warmth and care. The girl realized that Rost was also very tired, but she felt insanely good to be in his arms and gradually she fell asleep. Rost noticed how Nesna was silent and went to the kingdom of Morpheus and did not bother her. He quietly said that she had done a good job and carried her back to the city. Margulis saw Rost defeat the huge Hydra from afar and was shocked at the defective healer's success. Margulis had rushed over from the guild with the other adventurers and didn't even hope that they could all defeat the Hydra together. And what he saw was unthinkable to him, for how could just two people defeat such a huge monster? Margulis once again realized that he had made a huge mistake when he kicked Rost out of his team, but it was too late to change anything. Soon, Amia also arrived on the scene. The sorceress asked Margulis if she and Severia were here too. But Severia replied that they had not had time to participate in the battle and Rost had done everything by himself along with his partner. Margulis was stunned at what had happened and regretted what he had done to Rost. Amia replied that Rost would not return to their team again and therefore he should be left alone. Margulis became angry and stated why Amia was suddenly acting like a righteous woman just because she insulted Rost less than the others. Amia replied that she didn't even think of making excuses and was just as responsible as everyone else. The Enchantress recalled the time when she was called to the Thunderblade elite group. She was really fascinated by Margulis and Severia, that was why she had bullied Rost along with everyone else. Amia realized to be much more reckless than the others. But now Amia was determined that she would not make such mistakes again. The Sorceress declared that she needed to stop regretting the past and asked Margulis and Severia to follow her. Amia led her partners to the newcomer's armory and explained that she had sold all their equipment in order to pay all the fines. And now they needed to buy new gear, even if it was just the simplest of gear. Margulis was instantly furious and became indignant that Amia was really suggesting they shop in such a shitty place. The team leader stated that it was just stupid and ridiculous. After all, they should buy gear from a more prestigious store. The Enchantress replied that there was no need to yell at her and reminded her that Thunderblade had lost its status as an elite team. Margulis immediately fell silent realizing that it was all his fault. Ami explained that perhaps they were poorer than many adventurers right now, and so they are not in a position to choose a store based on pride alone. The Enchantress then stated that there was still a future ahead of them and showed the coins. Margulis asked where Amiya had gotten the money from. 
The sorceress replied that the money was given to her by Leela when she offered to join her team. Margulis asked if Amiya had decided to pay off that money so easily and leave Thunderblade. The enchantress replied that she had turned down Leela's offer. Although she was happy to receive such an offer from Leela, she still decided not to leave her current team. Amiya admitted that she had always admired Margulis and Severia and can't from so easily quit. The Enchantress stated that with that money, they could start over. And even though they had done terrible things before, they could still redeem themselves. Amiya suggested that they immediately buy new equipment with this money and pay off Rost's debt little by little. And in the future, they would try to thank Leela for her help. And by doing so, they would regain their status as an elite team. Margulis knocked the coins out of the naive sorceress's hands and then struck her. The Thunderblade leader ordered the sorceress not to talk nonsense after all, they were still an elite team. Margulis and Severia decided that if they sold the sorceress to a slave trader, they could buy equipment with the proceeds. After all, Amiya should be liked for her pretty face and skills, and so they will get a good sum for her paltry life. And then they need to find a new place where they will be accepted as an elite team. Leela resented how vile and despicable Margolis and Severia were for doing that to her partner. Leela then confessed that she was uncomfortable, but she wanted to ask Zig for help in this case. Leela remembered how Amiya had decided to stay in Thunderblade, because she sincerely believed that her partners would realize their wrongdoings and start leading a normal life. All of this triggered a fit of rage and Leela said she couldn't hold back any longer. Leela stormed into the room and angrily asked what they were doing with Amiya. Margulis realized the implications of all this and replied that the sorceress had just slipped unluckily and hit her head. But Leela declared that it was all a complete nonsense and together with Zig made a well-deserved retribution. Leela said that if those scumbags hadn't done that to Amiya, they would have still had a chance to be an elite team again. But now they've blown it all on their own. Leela hurriedly healed Amiya and Sieg said that he would take the two to the royal capital and hand them over to justice as kidnappers. For such a crime, they would be slaves for the rest of their lives. And since they were still young and full of health, they would be welcomed gladly at the penal colony. Zig promised that they would be greatly regretted for what they had done to Amiya. Zig then asked if he could clarify something with Leela. Sieg asked if Leela really wanted to take Amiya on her team. Leela replied that there was no need to worry. And even though Amiya made a mistake and can't be called smart, she can still change for the better. We should also consider that Amiya has an incredible care for her comrades, and this quality will come in handy in teamwork. Zig reminded them that this sorceress might have deep soul wounds. Leela replied that that was exactly why they should show mercy and help this foolish girl. And at least Amiya is no longer a stranger to them. Zig stated that he didn't expect anything else from Leela, and she wants to make the world a better place as always. Leela has noticed that actually Zig is worried about Amiya's fate as well but only his restraint prevents him from showing it. Rost had lately begun to be harassed by adventurers asking for forgiveness. This happened literally everywhere and embarrassed Rost. This time two guys caught up with him and started begging for mercy and promising to change their behavior. A few days had passed since Rost had destroyed the Hydra, and now his position among the adventurers had changed greatly. One part of the adventurers constantly apologized to him, and the other part invited him to join their teams. All of this became very annoying and annoying. Rost of course always wanted universal recognition, but it turned out to be even too much. Rost hurriedly got rid of the intrusive adventurers and said that he forgave them for everything, just so long as they would stop harassing him. Rost met Nesna, who also had to hide her identity because of her popularity. The girl offered to go to get a new assignment and complained that being popular was not an easy thing to do. Nesna recalled how joyfully the people of the city greeted them after their victory over the Hydra. All the people praised the heroism of Rost and Nesna and called them incredible adventurers. The people even organized a feast in honor of Rost and Nesna and gave them many gifts. Rost said that it was indeed a miracle that they had been able to defend this city they had something to be proud of. Now they had other important things to do. Once inside the building Rost and Nesna met the women who greeted the guests cheerfully. The women immediately took a keen interest in Rost and said they wanted to become much closer to him. The girls began to offer various favors if Rost would join their team. Nesna was furious at such insolence and vulgar behavior by the strange women. Nesna reminded that Rost had actually come to get an assignment. But Nesna was mentally sent far away and kept urging Rost to be closer to them. 
A person from outside intervened in the situation and asked them to immediately get away from Rost. Sieg stated that Rost was now a member of his team and therefore no one should annoy him. Rost was very surprised at this turn of events and only thought that he had forgotten to be asked who he wanted to be on the team with. The annoying girl immediately stopped pestering Rost. She realized that she was facing Sieg, a full-time adventurer, and it was best not to argue with him. A staff adventurer has a higher rank than elite adventurers. To stand as a staff adventurer, one must possess the corresponding abilities and pass the toughest exam. Rost thought it was strange since such a strong adventurer was interested in his team. Sieg meanwhile told the obsessive Nancy that she shouldn't bother Rost, because with her, his progress would stop. The frightened Nancy replied in a trembling voice that she had no claim on Rost at all and had no objection to the staff adventurer. Sieg then turned his attention to Rost and Nesna and asked them to follow him. Once outside, Sieg apologized for pretending to be a member of the same team as Rost and putting him in a stupor. Rost and Nesna thought that they were more embarrassed by the man's notice, but they did not speak of it. Rost explained that he was not at all upset by Zig's statement, but rather grateful that the staff adventurer had saved him from the harassment of those ladies. Sieg replied as politely as possible that he was not to be thanked, for it was the duty of the older comrade to help the younger. Rost did not expect such an answer and asked if Sieg was really a disciple of Ronald himself. Sieg replied that Rost had gotten it right and that he had indeed learned his skills from Ronald. Rost guessed that apparently the full-time adventurer had arrived in the Labyrinth City with his teacher Ralma, and she was the one who told Sieg about his team. Rost inquired why Sieg had come to this city with Ralma. Sieg did not go into details and replied that it was a long story. Rost thought it might be more serious than he expected. Rost offered his help if a full-time adventurer needed it. Sieg replied that he had something he would like to ask Rost for. Nesna and Rost immediately stated that they would be willing to assist in any endeavor. Sieg offered to organize a joint temporary group with Rost. The staff adventurer explained that his plans included the destruction of Phoenix, and he would be glad to have Rost and Nesna help in that endeavor. Rost realized that he was talking about a monster that was far more dangerous than a Hydra, and then asked if he had pwned the light correctly, that it was about a magical monster that had only recently appeared. Sieg explained that it was exactly that, but luckily Phoenix hadn't had time to evolve yet, and so it needed to hurry up. Usually, strong magic monsters evolve a few months after they appeared. And that means that the newly appeared Phoenix is still just getting ready to evolve, and this is the perfect opportunity to defeat it. Zig explained that he'd had to deal with an exceptional case before, and there was no telling how much damage the Phoenix would do if it evolved. And as dangerous as it was, it was necessary to destroy the Phoenix before it evolved. Nesna said they would be much safer together with Zig. Roust agreed with his friend and replied to the staff adventurer that they were willing to team up for such a task. Sieg stated that there was something he had to inform himself about before he could devise a plan of action. The staff adventurer explained that at the moment, the caster in his group was not feeling well, and that was making their team incomplete. At this moment, a worried Amiya appeared and said that she had finally found Mr. Denzig. Amiya stated that she was fully prepared and wanted to help defeat the Phoenix. Rost, of course, recognized his former Thunderblade teammate and was surprised to see her. The Enchantress was also unprepared to see Rost in the company of a full-time adventurer. Rost asked what was even going on here. Sieg apologized for shocking Rost. He then explained that the matter was that the Enchantress of his group was Amiya. This girl was also sneakily tricked and abandoned by the other members of Thunderblade. And Amiya is still unable to recover from the shock she had experienced. Sieg said that he certainly understands how Amiya and Thunderblade treated Rost badly. But right now, he needed everyone to unite into one complete team. And if possible, help the sorceress forget about the past. Nesna was unhappy with this decision and the prospect of working together with Amiya, but still left it up to Rost. Rost thanked his partner for her understanding and for her trust. Nesna, embarrassed and blushing as usual, replied that they were a team and should do everything together. Rost and Nesna promised the staff adventurer that they would try to find common ground with Amiya for the sake of the common cause. Rost then asked to be privy to the details, but Sieg indefinitely replied that it was a very long story. Sieg told how Amiya tried to persuade Margulis to make amends with Rost and start over. But she was severely beaten and was going to be sold into slavery. 
Rost replied that it was a sad story, but he was not really very surprised at the way Margulis had acted. Sieg explained that he understood the attitude Amiya had developed, but she was now a full member of his crew. And she can't be left in such a depressed state. Although it was hard to forgive her right away, he should try to be sympathetic to her desire to change. Sieg said that he was going to give the entire bounty for killing Phoenix to Rost and Nasna as payment for their participation. Rost replied that in that case, Sieg his team would suffer a loss. But the staff adventurer explained that he had already discussed this matter with his team, and so there was no need to worry about it. Besides, if they managed to return the Enchantress to her former normal state, they should be able to defeat Phoenix with ease. Therefore, forgiving Rost might serve as a consolation for Amia, and she will recover her morale faster. Rost explained that he saw no point in forgiving the sorceress, since in that case Amia would no longer have to make amends to him. Therefore, she must come to a normal state of mind on her own and decide what she wants to be. Sieg did not argue with Rost and said that they would discuss the battle plan with the Magic Phoenix in a few days, and now he had to go. Nesna asked Rost if Amia would be able to come to full health to be useful during the battle. But Rost did not know the answer to that question. So Nesna suggested that he talk to Amia. Meanwhile, the agitated sorceress was at a loss for words. She reproached herself for running away when she met Rost. Although before that she had replayed the situation many times in her mind and wanted to apologize to Rost. But she could not contain her emotions and just ran away. Amia realized that now she had no one, those who had been around for a long time had simply betrayed her and wanted to get rid of her like garbage. The sorceress cried again at the feeling of her inferiority, but at that moment Nesna said that she had finally found her. Amia asked if Nesna was the same girl from Rost's team, but Nesna explained that she only came to warn, and Amia should stop using Rost for the sake of alleviating her guilt. The sorceress became hysterical and claimed that Nesna could even know about her. Nesna replied that she didn't care at all how the sorceress really felt, but she knows very well how wrong Amiya has been. So the right thing for Amiya to do now is not to try to redeem herself and not to pester the others with her suffering. Nesna told how the staff adventurer Sieg had offered them a reward for killing Phoenix, only for them to forgive Amiya. The sorceress was surprised by such news and began to ask why Zig was doing this for her since she had only recently joined his team. Nesna explained that Sieg considered Amiya a full member of his team, and that was why he was trying to help her. Amiya suddenly realized how stupid she had been and had not noticed before those who really wanted to help her. The sorceress thanked Nesna for her visit, for now a lot of things made sense to her. Amiya exclaimed that she wanted to pay back her debt to Nesna and Rost right now. Nesna didn't bother to forbid the sorceress from doing what she wanted. Amiya decided that she should apologize to Zig as soon as possible and afterwards ask for permission to participate in the battle with the Phoenix. Amiya felt a rush of positive emotions and thanked the staff adventurer for accepting her into their team. Then the two teams met and Leela was able to meet Nesna, for before they had only known each other by rumor. Amiya did not miss her chance and gathered her thoughts and apologized to Rost. In doing so, the sorceress tried to hand him money. Amiya explained that it was all she had for now but in the future she hoped to pay Rost in full for all her insults. Rost replied that he was willing to accept the money and accepted the sorceress's apology. Eventually both teams sat down at the table and Sieg said that it was time to start discussing the assignment. The staff adventurer explained that first, it was vital for them to strip Phoenix of his fire armor. After all, thanks to this armor, the monster is enveloped in burning flames and so they won't be able to attack him at close range while he is under such protection. The phoenix is very sensitive to magic, so by normal means from a long distance, its defense cannot be broken through and another solution must be sought. Amiya suggested that with her silent magic, they would be able to strip the phoenix of its fire armor. Rouse said that if that were to happen, then all that would be left to do was finish what they had started. But Sieg explained that the problem was that Phoenix was constantly releasing fireballs and silent magic takes a long time to prepare and it was unclear if they would have that time. Rost replied that in that case, they would have to come up with another plan of action. But in the end, they would definitely manage. Rost suggested becoming a decoy and distracting the Phoenix for a while. Nesna was not in favor of the idea and said that it was very dangerous but Roust replied that he was confident in his abilities and together they would defeat the Phoenix. 
After discussing the battle plan with the Phoenix, Nasra said that she had a good feeling that they would defeat the Phoenix easily. Rost agreed that together with Zig's team, it should be easy. They still shouldn't relax though and should buy a few things for the hike. Leela called out and asked for a moment of her time. Leela thanked Nasna and Rost for helping Amia come to her senses. Leela explained that she didn't want to say it in front of the sorceress, but Sieg was also very grateful for that help. Rost replied that he didn't really do anything, but Leela only advised him not to be so modest. After all, Rost had actually given the sorceress a chance to redeem herself, and that was Amia's motivation. Leela suggested that perhaps the good fortune that Rost had had was for him to let go of the pain that Amia had caused him. Leela said she was happy about that and was willing to apologize for Amia too. Rost replied that even so, it could not mean that a past filled with resentments could disappear somewhere without a trace. Leela stated that she fully shared the sorceress's guilt after all, she was responsible for those she had taken into her group. Therefore, she was truly grateful to Nesna and Rost for their understanding. Leela told her that there was no way they could get Amia in order, and the sorceress was completely broken. But thanks to Nesna's intervention, it was possible to change the situation and Amia returned to normal. Nesna was embarrassed and explained that she had just had a little talk with Amia, and it was no big deal. Leela apologized for the disturbance and advised to prepare for a future battle. Leela promised that she would definitely try to express all her gratitude during the battle with the Phoenix. Nesna admitted that she hadn't even expected that there were girls as cool and stylish as Leela among the elite adventurers. And Ralma, for example, is completely different. Rost replied that teacher Ralma is indeed an exceptional person, and they cannot be compared in the same format. Shouts could be heard behind them, and another group of adventurers rushed to Rost to apologize. They apologized for their actions and begged for their lives. Rost replied that he didn't need anyone else's lives and asked them not to pursue him any further. But the unknown adventurer said that there are terrible rumors about Rost. Many say that Rost leaves unwanted adventurers in the labyrinth. Such news angered Rost, and he declared that this was some kind of nonsense. Nasna shouted that it was someone's dastardly lie and Rost would never do such a thing. But the frightened adventurers did not believe it and decided that now they would definitely be finished. Nasna said that these guys were so scared that it would be difficult to change their minds. Rost decided to be resourceful and asked the adventurers to take the requests of the locals and bring them whatever they asked for free of charge. And if successful, he would never touch them again, and perhaps they would even receive and reward. The adventurers were a little resentful that they would have to perform the tasks for free, but they decided that life was worth more. And since there was no other choice, they must follow Rost's orders. Nesna asked why Rost did that. Rost explained that recently the prices of all raw materials in the guild have been rising very fast, so the workers can't make proper weapons or equipment. And most likely these rumors were spread just from the guild. And if it really is true, then it's completely unclear what purpose the guild is pursuing. Rost thought that it was more important to prepare for tomorrow's battle with the Phoenix and suggested going shopping. Nesna supported such an idea and said that she was glad since they were doing all the things together. Finally, the day of the battle with the Phoenix came, and when Rost and Nesna showed up at the appointed time, they were greatly surprised, for Zig's team had arrived much earlier. Rost apologized for being late and said that he and Nesna were fully prepared. Zig explained that it was his team that came too early, and so there was no need to worry about it. Leela noticed Rost's weapon and asked if he was going to fight with such a sword. Rost explained that with this huge thing, he would be able to hit the Phoenix even when it was in fire armor. Leela reminded him that Rost was only a healer. Sieg advised Leela not to worry, as Rost is a pretty capable guy and can surprise with his abilities. Nesna joked that even she could use such a huge weapon, you get a little practice. Sieg said that since everyone is ready, it's time to start this adventure and activated the teleporter. In a moment, both teams were in the right place. Rost immediately sensed the presence of the magic monster and prepared for the encounter. Phoenix has always showed aggression to the uninvited guests, and with all his appearance, showed that he did not intend to give up so easily. Each of the team was ready to fulfill their role, and Rost decided that it was time for him to get busy distracting the Phoenix. Phoenix did not reinvent himself and tried to hit the adventurers with fireballs. Sieg said that he was just expecting such a fervent greeting, and so he was ready for it. The staff adventurer's huge sword shattered the fireball, and the flames rushed past. 
Sieg shouted to the fire monster that since he remembered him from last time, they could continue the game they had started. Rost realized that things were not going according to plan, as he was the one who was supposed to distract the phoenix, but the monster had his full attention on Sieg. Rost decided that in that case, he should take over the role of a staff adventurer and ordered Nasna to support his attack. Rost and Nasna pounced on the fire monster. Rost decided that this attack would allow at least one of them to hit the phoenix. The phoenix tried to fend off Nasna's attack, and the girl yelled that now it was time for Rost to act. The healer realized that the phoenix considered Nasna a more dangerous opponent, and so he had a chance to get closer to the monster. Rost chose a good moment and swung his huge sword. He realized that he was doing as he had planned, and then struck. Rost felt the incredible heat from the phoenix armor, but thanks to his magic weapon, he was able to withstand such a high temperature. The phoenix took significant damage, and Rost mentally thanked the monster for the phoenix underestimating him. Now everything went according to the prepared plan, the phoenix emphasized all its attention on Rost. The rest of the team prepared to fulfill their roles, and Rost realized that the desired result would not be long in coming. Fireballs rushed towards the adventurers once again. Rost skillfully dodged the flying menace, but some of the flames still managed to hit him. Rost realized that if he ducked the wrong way, the fireball could hit Amiya and the rest of the team. And after that, things might not go according to plan. More and more Phoenix attacks continued to exhaust Rost. The healer thought that he had counted on this all being much easier. Leela realized that it was her time to act and applied a healing circle. Leela then shouted to Rost that Amia's magic was ready to be used, and he should retreat. Rost glanced back and made sure that the sorceress was ready to deliver her blow to the phoenix. But then things didn't go according to plan and the phoenix, as if sensing danger from Amia directed a fireball at her, and then lunged towards the sorceress. The situation became uncertain, and everyone just watched what was happening. Suddenly, the monster's movement was disrupted by a powerful blow. Nasna shouted in delight that it was Rost who threw his sword at the phoenix. The time gained allowed the sorceress to continue summoning the spirits of water and asking for their protection. Soon a huge torrent of icy water rained down on the fire monster, extinguishing its deadly flames. The phoenix began to thrash from side to side in terror, but its flames no longer existed. The adventurers watched the enormous monster suffer and finally decided that it could now not launch its fireballs. Sieg offered to show mercy and kill the monster soon to end its suffering. Rost thought at this moment that the phoenix was proving to be a more uncomfortable opponent for him than the Hydra. It felt like they had been fighting for what seemed like an eternity. In fact, the entire battle had only taken a few minutes. But now it was all over and they had a well-deserved victory. Suddenly, as soon as Sieg approached the phoenix, it was struck by a powerful flame. And where the monster was lying, a tornado of fire appeared. The deadly vortex grew larger, and its flames began to burn the adventurers. The phoenix was reborn, and was becoming much more dangerous than it had been before. Rost shouted that this was simply unbelievable, and most likely the phoenix was now evolving. It didn't take long for the fire monster to attack. Nasna shouted that the phoenix can't be allowed to fully regenerate, and struck the strongest blow. But the girl felt that her hand collided with something very powerful. The phoenix didn't feel any damage from the warrior's attack, and Nasara sadly lost the burn on her arm. Rost realized that time was playing against them, and rushed to attack the phoenix as well. But it was all to no avail, the phoenix did not react to the blows in any way. Rost realized that their combined attacks did not prevent the phoenix from evolving in almost any way. Although just a few minutes ago, he was confident that they had defeated the fire monster. Rost thought, he has absolutely no idea what to do when the phoenix is covered in fire armor again after evolving. If they don't stop the monster now and here, the city might suffer from its wrath. The sorceress Amia was at a complete loss. Leela was trying to treat the wounded staff adventurer Zig, and Rost realized that he was now the only one who could fully confront the phoenix. There was still hope that the damage done to the phoenix was piling up. So Ross decided that he should use his body enhancement and try to deal another decisive blow to the monster. Ross realized that applying the body enhancement put a great strain on his body, which was already severely exhausted after the battle. But there was no time for doubt and Ross decided that he had to do it, even at the cost of his health, because otherwise the phoenix might break free and hundreds of people would suffer. Magical power surged through the healer's body and Ross felt that he had applied the body enhancement skill at full power. 
It surprised him that he felt no pain at this moment, and the wounds on his body disappeared. Wasting no time at all, Rost lunged forward at the phoenix. His swift attack took the phoenix, who was busy evolving, by surprise. Rost pierced the monster's head with force and felt an unbearable heat on his hands. The powerful fiery explosion threw Rost far aside, but in the end, he realized that he had managed to prevent a real disaster. The phoenix's lifeless body was a thank you for all his efforts. Zig, who had time to recover, marveled at how Rost was able to defeat Phoenix single-handedly. Sieg remembered that Rost had no talent, and such people need to make incredible efforts all their lives on their journey as an adventurer. These were the words that Sieg had once heard from his teacher. His teacher Ronald could reliably tell what each person was worth. After all, until now, he had unmistakably determined whether a person had talent and any ability. Teacher Ronald was absolutely accurate in pointing out that Roust had no talents. Roust apologized for taking so long to deal with the phoenix and making everyone worry. Leela asked if Roust was okay and suggested that he rest, but the healer replied that he was fine. Roust showed off his biceps and joked that he even got a little exercise during the battle. Sieg thought that such a result could hardly be called an easy test, and he himself would not joke about it. The staff adventurer watched Roust's joy and decided that this guy would in the future and surely become even stronger. The combined team then headed home. Sieg summarized the battle with the phoenix and said that the monster was really trying to evolve. It was clear because of the way it abruptly revived from its half-dead state. It also remained a strange anomaly that the two magic monsters had evolved at an incredible speed recently. And it couldn't have been a mere coincidence. Sieg promised that he would definitely report these events to the Imperial capital. The staff adventurer also said that it was likely that Ralma would arrive in Labyrinth City within a few days. Roust thought at this moment that when his teacher showed up here, she would definitely make him work to the point of exhaustion. After the meeting ended, Roust continued to analyze the battle with the Phoenix. Roust recalled the moment when he applied the body enhancement. As he first felt an unusual change in his body, his wounds had completely disappeared, and this could be the confirmation that he had finally overcome the limit of his abilities. Previously, the enhancement skill was a double-edged weapon as its use put extreme strain on one's body. Rost used the skill in battles and then relieved the devastating effects of its use with healing magic. And at some point he had reached his limit, however now he was able to overcome it. Rost realized that since this had happened, he could become even stronger in the future. Suddenly, Rost was most brazenly distracted from his musings and rudely called out. The group of adventurers called Rost a complete cretin, and they promised to teach Rost good manners immediately. The healer asked who they were and what they wanted. The leader of the group of adventurers stated that they were well aware of how Rost had parasitized the staff adventurers. Rost realized that these guys thought he had purposely asked to be on Zig's team in order to succeed. Rost was amused by such misguided, foolish adventurers. The team of adventurers prepared for battle, and their leader ordered to immediately cripple Rost. And if they didn't kill him, they would make it look like a normal quarrel between adventurers in front of the guild. Rost assessed the composition of his opponents and realized that there were two warriors, a healer and a mage against him. Rost thought this was a great opportunity to test his new powers and rushed forward. Roast's lightning fast strikes left no chance to the brazen adventurer, and Roust thought that with the evolved magic monsters and considered it a great bad luck. But as it turned out, it was only through these battles that he was able to become stronger. A few minutes later, the team of adventurers were lying on the ground while their healer tried unsuccessfully to help his comrades. Roast noticed that the healer didn't attack him saving his magic for healing, but there didn't seem to be any point. Suddenly, the healer still decided to attack Rost, but immediately changed his mind as soon as he saw Rost's sword. Rost advised him to make hasty decisions and reminded him that it was better for a healer to treat wounded friends. Rost left the scene of the accidental battle satisfied with himself. Soon Rost arrived at the marketplace, where he was already waiting. Rost apologized for being late and invited the children to tell an interesting story. The children were delighted with Rost and agreed to listen to anything he could tell them. The children often asked Rost to stay with them and tell interesting adventurous adventures. And so when Rost had free time, he would come to the market and tell them stories, and eventually it became a good tradition. After finishing another fascinating story, Rost decided to go on. Finally, the children asked him to teach them how to fight with a sword next time. 
but Rost explained that he did not really want to become an adventurer and so was not too capable in teaching others. The children recalled how Rost saved the city from the Hydra and began to say that they too want to become real heroes in the future. They also want to be strong and learn how to protect their families. Rost promised that he would think about what they said and decided to stay a while to play with the noisy children. Everyone was happy from such meetings got a lot of positivity. In the end, Rost said goodbye to the children and advised that in his absence he should socialize with other adventurers who also knew many things. On his return home, Rost had Nesna waiting for him. Rost immediately noticed her worried look and asked what had happened to her. The girl explained that they had something to talk about. Rost thought that perhaps something bad had happened and agreed to talk. Nesna, after thinking for a while, offered Rost to buy a house for their team to live in. The girl explained that the victory over the Phoenix brought them a lot of money and besides it would be good for them to get closer. And strengthening their bonds of camaraderie would benefit the development of the team. Rost asked if they had decided to buy a house too soon. After all, it is better to save money for unforeseen circumstances. Nesna was immediately upset, but still did not argue. She agreed that perhaps Rost was right. And in the future, the money would be useful for solving crisis situations. Then Nesna said she would go for a walk to get her mind off the bad thoughts. Rost realized that he had upset Nesna a lot and thought about how to fix it. Left alone, Nesna thought she never should have tried to talk about buying a shared house. And most likely Rost would never want to do that. Nesna had hoped that if Rost agreed to buy a house, it would mean that he was treating her well. But it turned out to be all for nothing and now she felt like a useless woman. Nesna tried to understand what made her so undesirable to Rost, and maybe she should still gain experience to become more attractive. Suddenly Layla appeared and asked why Nesna was sitting here alone and why she was sad. Nesna immediately felt the aura of a grown woman and once again marveled at Leela's seductive appearance. Nesna realized that the solution to her problem was at her fingertips. Nesna exclaimed that she needed to get Leela's advice right away. Nesna ended up telling all her worries to Leela and confessed that she really hoped that Rost did not hate her. Leela laughed and explained that she was sure that Rost was treating Nesna very well and she had nothing to worry about. Nesna was immediately pleased and said that she relied on Leela's vast experience in love affairs and trusted her judgment. Leila did not expect such a confession and thought, why on earth did this girl think that she had a wealth of experience in love affairs? After all, she really only loves one person and is loyal to Zig. Nesna then recounted how Rost once told her with an irritated look that they should sleep in separate rooms. Leela replied that there was no need to worry about that and things would surely change. The healer thought that she was even a little sad to hear about love affairs from someone who had succeeded in love more than she had. Nesna complained that Rost wasn't going to buy a house for them to live in together. And now she didn't even know if she should be more persistent. Leela advised Nesna not to lose hope and to keep trying as before. At the same time, the healer thought that Rost was really acting strange with the young girl because he should be more active. Leela decided that she would ask Zig to investigate the situation from the man's side. In the morning, Rost felt lethargic and tired from the fact that he had never gotten a good night's sleep. He kept thinking about how upset Nesna had been yesterday at his refusal to buy the common house. But what happened next came as a complete surprise and robbed Rost of peace in every way. On returning home, Nesna asked permission to enter Rost's room. In doing so, she was wearing a minimum of clothes, which had never happened before. Rost was puzzled at what was happening, but still allowed the girl to enter his room. Rost, trying to stay as confident as possible, asked what was wrong with her. Nesna tried to hug Rost and said that she just missed him and came to be together. Rost did not expect such behavior from his partner and asked if she had had something strong to drink. Nesna became indignant and explained that in fact she had not drunk anything and was on her feet. At that moment, Rost thought that she must be lying, for nothing else but alcohol could explain such strange behavior. Rost tried to calm her down and suggested that she sit down and catch her breath. Rost reflected that he had actually thought that Nesna was upset, but now it was completely unclear what was going on with her. Rost decided that he himself needed to calm down and keep his cool. After all, Nesna trusts him completely, and that's why she carelessly laid down in his bed. Rost wondered if everything was really as good as he saw it, or if there was still something to worry about. Thoughts were jumbled in his head from the unforeseen situation. It was especially exciting to see a young female body on his bed. 
but eventually Rost reminded himself that he was a real man and just covered the girl with a blanket. Rost thought that Nesna should be more cautious and careful in the future, because she might meet someone who would easily take advantage of the situation. Rost went to the jewelry store, where he was greeted cheerfully by Emily, the saleswoman. Rost explained that he had come to see how the jewelry was coming along. Emily joked that Rost was an overly impatient customer. Emily explained that her husband had learned that it was a commission from Rost himself, and was determined to make a real masterpiece for the savior of the city. That was why the work wasn't finished yet, as it required extra time. Emily admitted that she herself would like to present Rost with the jewelry as soon as possible, but for the time being this is not possible. Rost was surprised by this personalized attention to his order and said that no matter how long it took, he would wait. In parting, Rost asked him to convey his respects to Emily's husband and to thank him for his efforts. Emily promised to do it right and advised Rost to be patient a little longer. Then Rost met Zig's staff adventurer. It turned out Zig was looking for him and immediately asked Rost to tell him something about Nason. Zig and Rost continued their conversation over a cup of tea. Rost asked what exactly Zig wanted to know about Nason. At this, Rost thought that whether Nasna had taken a liking to the staff adventurer, and maybe they were even already dating. Sieg guessed what Rost was thinking and asked him not to worry or stress. Sieg explained that he only wanted to understand why Rost didn't want to buy a house together as Nasna wanted. And that was the end of his interest in the young girl. Rost was surprised at such a question and asked how Zig knew about all this. Sieg immediately explained that Nesna had met Leela yesterday and they had discussed everything, and then Leela had told him about the house. Sieg admitted that Leela had asked him to find out the reason for the refusal. Rost immediately realized why Nesna had been acting so strangely that evening and calmed down a little. Rost replied that he would tell Zig everything, but only on the condition that Nesna didn't find out. And even Leela must keep it a secret. Sieg promised that he would take care of the secrecy. Rost explained that he was not at all against buying a shared house, but he had something else important to do before that. Sieg immediately felt a wave of curiosity come over him and asked what the reason was. Rost revealed that he planned to confess his sincere feelings to Nesna before buying a house for them to share. Sieg was surprised at this decision and continued to listen curiously. Rost explained that he wasn't planning to buy a house right away since it would be very difficult for him to control his most cherished desires now that he was living in one house. So first, he needs to do things the right way so that he won't be ashamed of his actions. Rost explained that if he gave vent to his desires now, Narsina would probably go along with him and allow him to do the extra. But if there is even a slight possibility that Nezna from what has happened, then it means that for the time being one must be patient. Rost has stated that he will definitely buy the house after he and Nesna become a legitimate couple. And then the lover's right would allow him to savor the pleasures of her. Sieg replied that he understood all these motives, but just why Rost was dragging it out for so long. After all, he could have confessed his feelings long ago. Rost replied that he didn't feel that he was ready for it yet. And if she says yes, he needs to prepare much better. Rost said that he planned to give Nesna a necklace, but it was not ready yet and so it would have to wait. Sieg replied that he now understood why Rost had spent so much time in the store. Rost replied that the necklace would be a sign of his sincere feelings, which was why he was delaying the confession until the necklace was ready. Sieg marveled at the young lad's plans and confessed that he had no idea Rost was so serious. Rost replied that he longed to see true happiness on Nesna's face and was willing to wait a little longer for that. Healer Rost truly considered Nesna the most precious person in his life. After all, she was the only one he could trust completely. Also, Nesna turned out to be the girl he fell in love with more than anything else in the world and with whom he dreams of staying for the rest of his life. And that is why he wants to do everything in his power to make the girl he loves truly happy. Even if some of his actions and deeds may cause someone's laughter and misunderstanding. Sieg stated that Rost is indeed a very strange guy, but all his actions are filled with kindness and nobility. Rost thanked him for his high praise and joked that if Nesna turned him down, all his efforts would be for nothing. Sieg replied that Rost must be a complete fool to think that Nesna would not agree to such an offer. Sieg advised not to worry, because he himself knows for sure that Rost will succeed and he and Nesna will live together. Rost thanked him for the conversation and the good advice and went home. Rost felt an unprecedented sense of lightness after his conversation with the adventurer from the capital. 
For a moment, Ross Stephen wanted to test his ability to strengthen his body in such a state. But then his attention was drawn to a group of adventurers who were excitedly discussing something. The adventurers became animated when they saw Rost beside them, but they did not explain anything to him. After a moment, Rost realized what was amusing the adventurers and moved closer to the bulletin board. On the wall hung an order that forbade Rost and his crew from entering the labyrinths. Rost was accused of using violence within the labyrinth city, and the edict itself was signed by the leadership of the Adventurers Guild. Rost couldn't believe what he was seeing, for it was utter nonsense. The boys he had punished for their rudeness explained that it was a punishment for yesterday's misbehavior. Rost replied that it was an unfair punishment, and in fact it was not he who had attacked them first. The leader of the attackers explained that not everything is so simple in this world, and it is not Rost who makes the decisions in this city. Rost realized that he was the victim of foul play, and the guild decided to get rid of his team by this method. An unbelievable anger came over Rost, and he shouted that everything in this city was rotten long ago. The adventurers were frightened by Rost's anger and rushed to explain that they had nothing to do with it, and it was the ruling of the Adventurers Guild. Hazem, an employee of the Adventurers Guild, advised Rost not to be outraged, for it would only aggravate his situation. Rost stated how he could accept an unjust accusation. After all, these guys were the first to start the conflict and sneakily attacked him in the street. But Hazem replied that everything had already been decided long ago, and nothing could be changed. Hazem angrily asked that if Rost had not yet understood, he should be much more intelligent. Rost of course understood everything, but still said that he had some remarks and protests about it, and in general he did not agree with the accusation. Hazem replied contemptuously that if Rost had any complaints, he could go to the Imperial capital and appeal against his accusation there. Rost really wanted at this moment to punish the despicable Hazem, but alas, one had to keep one's temper. Rost went in search of Nasna and found her in the marketplace. Rost felt angry and resentful, and immediately apologized to his beloved girl. Rost explained that because he carelessly got into a scuffle their team was unfairly punished, and now they can't visit the labyrinth or even sell mind resources in this city. Nasna replied that it was her fault too, for she could not be there at that moment. And as a true partner she made a mistake. The local merchants asked Rost not to despair, for he was not really to blame for anything. The merchants reminded how Rost had selflessly tried for the sake of all the people of this town, and there was no one among the inhabitants who could accuse Rost of anything wrong. Rost felt supported and thanked for the kind treatment. The traders said that they would now try to get the resources they needed themselves, and should do what they could to help Rost and Nesna. The traders were certainly capable of organizing themselves in a difficult situation, for they often faced difficulties. But Roust realized that even though the villagers said that nothing bad had happened, they would not be able to even get the lowest quality resources without his team. Roust also decided that if his team was not in town, the other adventurers would stop supplying the merchants with free goods. After all, why fulfill the order of someone who isn't around? All of this was disheartening and Rost continued to sympathize with his responsibility for the incident. Out of resentment and despair, Rost slammed his fist into the wall. The healer regretted that one careless act had blown all his plans for the future. Not so long ago, he was going to take the necklace and make a long-awaited confession to the woman he loved. Thoughts jumbled in Rost's head, but there was no solution. There was only one question pulsing, why had it happened now? Rost went to Sieg for help. He apologized for the sudden visit and told him that he had been forbidden to enter the labyrinth. Sieg listened to Rost's story and said that the guild had done a dastardly deed. Rost explained that Nesna had now gone to the guild to get answers, but it was unlikely to help her. Therefore, there was only hope for Sieg. The capital adventurer said that he would try to help, as he owed a great debt for that incident with the Phoenix. Sieg explained that he couldn't lift the guild's ban, because only the guild leader could decide such important matters and as an adventurer, he doesn't have access to such opportunities. Rost replied that he had never seen the head of the guild, and all this happened because of a special provocation by a group of adventurers. Therefore, it was not clear why the head had made such a harsh judgment. Sieg replied that he didn't know that either. But in any case, Rost must leave Labyrinth City. Sieg explained that the head was clearly plotting something against Rost, and it would be better for him to move to the capital. Sieg promised to help become famous, as he has good connections in the capital. Rost thanked for the help, but said that for now he would not go anywhere. 
Rost explained that she didn't want to leave the people of the city unprotected, at least not until there were adventurers who would fully supply the people with resources. And besides, there is something to be done for Nesna. Rost knew that Nesna was from a family of aristocrats, though she hid it. And yet, she has a bad relationship with her family. And now her parents will be even more against their union, because he is a common adventurer who was accused of a crime. Rost is determined to distinguish himself so that even the aristocrats can't say anything against him. Rost declared that he was obliged to become an elite adventurer in this city. Sieg was surprised and asked if Rost had decided to become on par with the teachers, of which there were only two in this world with such a high level. Rost replied that he understood how difficult it was to become an elite adventurer. But it is still possible. And to do so, one must be part of the same team to defeat a monster that has completed evolution. Sieg was surprised by Rost's knowledge, but agreed with his words. Sieg reminded him that Rost had already defeated such a monster, a phoenix. But alas, that would not be enough to become an elite adventurer. After all, one must still reach the level of mastery of the teachers. Rost replied that he intends to continue destroying monsters that have evolved and one day, he will be called an elite adventurer. Sieg said that a very complicated plan. Rost explained that he could have just taken Nesna and moved away from this city, but that was the wrong decision. After all, then her relationship with her family would be permanently damaged. Rost admitted that he himself is an orphan and therefore does not want to leave his favorite girl without the attention of parents because it is a terrible feeling. And someday Nesna will realize that it is his fault. Zig agreed that it is a noble goal that is worthy of respect. Sieg reminded that he could not challenge the chapter's decision, but if he set aside his high status, that would be another matter. Sieg promised that he would definitely think of something. Rouse said that there was no need to make such sacrifices for his sake. But Sieg replied that he had never really valued his status as a full-time adventurer, and for a good cause, one could get rid of it. Especially since Ralma would be arriving soon. Rost was delighted with Zig's act and thanked him for such invaluable help. But then there was a strange sound and Sieg asked irritably what else might have happened and suggested that they go outside. Angry shouts and calls to look for people were heard in the distance. A whole group of goblins appeared up ahead, searching for their victims. The leader of their gang ordered to kill all the people in the city. Sieg said that these monsters had probably escaped from the labyrinth, and now they must be destroyed before they killed the humans. Rost did not hesitate to rush at the enemy to save the people of the city. The monsters were strong but clumsy and Rost was able to land a few accurate blows. But Rost was surprised, for after his attacks the goblin did not die, but was only wounded. It became clear that these monsters were clearly different from ordinary goblins, but together with Zig, they would definitely defeat them. Several combined attacks greatly reduced the number of goblins, and eventually the monster commander ordered a retreat. Rost noticed that the goblins had shown resourcefulness and were trying to take hostages. There were women nearby and Rost tried to warn them. Rost then rushed to their aid and was able to destroy the goblin at the last moment with a precise throw of his dagger. The women were saved and ran for cover. Panic spread through the city like a plague. People were running for their lives. Rost spotted a vile goblin rushing to grab a little girl who had fought off the adults. Rost, left unarmed, was able to stamp the goblin's head into the ground with his bare hands and save the little girl. Just then another goblin appeared, hungry for human blood. But at the last moment, his head was cut in half like a watermelon. Sieg announced that it was the last goblin, and now one could not worry. The staff adventurer shouted to the residents that they were in no danger now. And Rost took his dagger and asked where these goblins had come from so suddenly in the city. Rost said that the goblins were too strong, and also they were intelligent since they could communicate normally. And if he and Zig weren't here, there would be a real disaster. Suddenly, a scream pierced the silence. Rost asked what it could be, since they had killed all the goblins. Sieg replied that perhaps something else besides goblins had happened. Rost rushed to where the scream had come from and promised that he would find out. In another part of the city, the young adventurer bravely held off the goblin attack. Even left alone, he did not waver and continued to hold back the onslaught of bloodthirsty monsters. But the goblins continued to attack and shouted that they should taste human meat. 